welcome one and all to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. And, you know, that's nice. Isn't that nice? Not everybody gets that at their work. That is so lovely. I, I, it's so nice that you're happy to see me, because I'm happy to see you. I really like coming out here and talking to you uh -huh. people every night. It's really, it's good for me. You're friendly. Uh -huh. You're attractive. You smell good. <laughs> and I, I just like talking about what people have been talking about all day long. You know, I'm thinking about it. You're thinking about it. It, it gives me a chance to work through what just happened and, and try to figure out what it means, which may today really tough because <laughs> the one thing everybody's talking about Trump signing or not signing the border wall deal doesn't mean anything I truly believe the years from now people are gonna look back on this day and say why are we looking back on that day because <laughs> know. we're supposed to care whether Trump won and Nancy lost or Trump caved and Nancy's dancing in the end zone but nothing, nothing that has happened in government in 2019 has affected anyone. Where's the infrastructure bill? Where's the immigration bill? Where's the fix on health care? We are celebrating, or supposed to be celebrating, that they're close to a deal to achieve the absolute minimum, having a government. <laughs> That's like... You know what I'm saying, Chris? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This is like celebrating. That is like celebrating that your child finally used the potty on his first day of medical school. <laughs> this is not impressive. It's not impressive anymore. Everything else, everything you're hearing in the news is just kabuki theater. For instance, Trump said uh, this about the bill. I can't say I'm happy. I can't say I'm thrilled. Okay, but his people can say he's gonna sign the bill. This is just engaging in foot-dragging theatrics for his base. He's got to do the dance to get to yes, which is a refreshing change from Trump's usual M.O., the grope to get past no. <laughs> now, this afternoon, true story. That's based on a true story, Ed Joe. This afternoon, Trump had a photo op with the president of Colombia, and while there, uh, he pretended he was still undecided because he hadn't read it yet. Well, we haven't uh, gotten it yet. We'll be getting it. We'll be looking for landmines because you could have that. Oh. <laughs> oh, did I mention, in addition to the wall, I want landmines. <laughs> I want landmines. Okay. I want uh, pits, moats filled with spikes and fire, and of course, fireproof crocodiles. I've said that many times. <laughs> that, yes. And just like they all rehearsed, both sides are claiming victory. Take House Minority Leader and man indicating how many Latinos he wants in America. <laughs> Kevin McCarthy, Kev, told CNBC, you gotta remember where Nancy Pelosi was. She who said no money for a wall. That's not the case. Democrats have now agreed to more than 55 miles of new barrier being built. Yes, 55 of the 2,000 miles of border wall <laughs> Trump asked for. Just another example of Trump's slogan, promises made, promises 3% kept. <laughs> okay? It's something. It's something. It's some percentage Gosh, darn it. of the promise. It's something, right? Of course, Democrat Congresswoman Nita Lowey claimed Trump didn't get what he wanted. This is not a wall. This is a barrier. Oh! Not a wall, a barrier. A clinching legal argument first made in the landmark case, potato v. potato. <laughs> now, even if Trump gets his funding, there's an unlikely obstacle on the border to his border obstacle, and it's butterflies or as Mike Pence calls them, gay moths. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I come on. I've never heard that before. Oh, yeah, John. Come on. I don't call them that. No, yes. I don't come call on. them no, that. Yes. Come on, John. That's yes. Him. That's come on. Him. We're, we're grown-ups. Because down in Texas, the National Butterfly Center is asking a court to stop federal officials from building a border wall across its land. And we wouldn't want butterflies to get trapped on one side of a border wall. How would they get past it? <laughs> a, a, a tunnel? I, I... Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 
The actual problem isn't for the butterflies, of course. It's for the people who work to preserve them on their southern migratory route, because the wall would cut the 100-acre property in two with as much as 70% of the land inaccessible. And the people at the Butterfly Center say they've already found government contractors cutting down their trees and mowing down brush that provides critical habitat for butterflies. It's like Trump's people are saying, I know kids in cages sounded evil, so we toned it down. We're just strangling butterflies. <laughs> I am surprised that Donald Trump is letting them get away with this. After all, he's got a lot in common with butterflies. They're both uh, fragile creatures with bright iridescent coloring <laughs> and paper-thin skin. It's just that Trump has never left the larval stage.